Oh yeah, so it, right. I start. I'm think I starting sharing the live. No, I will share the link. Okay. So let me start. Okay. Yeah, I can see in the screen. Yes. Okay, fine. And I will uh, see. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, let me start the proceeding now. Good morning, everyone. May Apuna Maku Kurumzari. Today we are having the community lectures uh, program number. It is a number eight. It is a lecture series of KKT Infal in collaboration with Misna Infal. Uh, before we start the program, let me speak about a little bit of, about this community series. Under the science communication program of Kangli Kongyang Tijinyon KKT Infal, the lecture series entitled Community is conducted in collaboration with Ms. Na Ipal to have a better interaction of the young minds with the professionals in the field of science and technology. Actually here, scientists, professor or researcher who are based at their own professional areas will be giving lectures and interact to nurture the young minds toward a career in science and technology. Speaker will generally talk about the present state of art in research in their respective field. Till today, we have seven community lecture series in the past two years. Today we are having Dr. Robindo Lairangkam. He will be speaking about electric vehicle and its opportunities and challenges present and future. So before we proceed, I would like to invite Dr. Sorokaiban Padmapati Devi, Director of KKT, to speak a few words about KKT. Dr. Padmapati. Good day to all of you. First of all, a brief about the center. This advanced, <coughs> this advanced research center, Kanglai Khongyang Pijinyon KKT Imphal, was inaugurated as an initiative under the joint collaboration of Longjam Trust, Kumbong, and the Maitram Foundation Imphal. It was inaugurated on 5th April, 2018 at the center. The main objective of the center is to perform high-end research in the field of science and technology and to set up the state of arts research facility. In the day to come, the center envisages setting up outstanding school of research to harness the risk biodiversity of the state. With the support of all our fellow members, we are looking forward for the day where this research center will be counted as one of the top 10 research centers in the world. Just a quick glimpse on the activities of the center, we have R&D program in nanoscience and technology. Cell plant, low cost scientific instrument, electric vehicles program, et cetera. Under business development division, we MOU with last private limited Imphal and Advantech instrument Mumbai. As a part of science communication scheme, KKT have successfully organized an international, international conference series. Kumang every year, Kumang 2019 was conducted with DM University in 2019. Kumang 2020 with Manipur Technical University in 2020 and Kumang 2021 will have will held in collaboration with Zenims in 2021. The center are the setting up is not for us. It is for the future generation. So it is ultimately necessary to groom students from young age towards a center in science and technology. As they will be taking the activities of the center forwards. So what we are doing today is basically for a young generation. Today, I'm so happy that our honorable speaker, Dr. Robindro has kindly agreed to motivate the young mind towards an existing career in science and technology. With a few words, I would like to thank all of you for joining the lecture and like to request Dr. Niras to continue with the proceedings. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Padmavati, for your kind words. Mm -hmm. Now I would like to invite 
Jinkai Wangzam, COO of Mitsna, uh, to speak a few words about Mitsna. He is he has done his master in history from Delhi University, and he is presently working as a Ministry of in Rural Development, Women of India. Mr. Jinkai. Uh, yes. Uh, th thank you, Dr. Niraj, for the introduction. Uh, a very good morning to uh, everyone present uh, for the eighth edition of uh, Kangminasi Lecture Series. Uh, I will take no longer than five minutes of your time. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Niraj and the entire uh, KKT team uh, for giving me the time to talk about uh, our organization. So uh, coming directly to it, Mitsna is a nonprofit organization uh, based in Imphal, uh, working extensively to promote holistic education to the state of Manipur uh, to be on par with the global standard. Uh, we draw our memberships mainly from uh, graduates, undergraduates, uh, and young working professionals. Uh, I'm sorry to inform that we had just closed this year's uh, membership window. Uh, but uh, keep an eye out uh, on the membership window for the next year. Uh, in the field, uh, we engage uh, with a diverse cohort of uh, students, uh, university, uh, college, secondary and high school students, uh, and provide them a vast platform uh, to explore different uh, modes of learning, uh, skills and qualifications uh, required uh, to enter and excel in multiple arenas. So uh, Mitsna uh, works at the intersection of uh, education uh, and skilling. Uh, we make this happen uh, in the field through various events, seminars, uh, webinars, workshops, uh, and competitions, uh, both offline and online. Uh, here, students are given the platform to connect with subject experts, academicians, and resource persons in uh, diverse fields. Uh, they are exposed to uh, unique and novel ways of acquiring uh, knowledge and information. Uh, many people have solicited our events on careers, uh, navigating through admission process in universities worldwide and uh, regular in uh, updates on internships. Uh, I will give a brief rundown of uh, uh, our activities, uh, past and present, uh, starting with uh, Mitsna Interactive Talks. Uh, it is a series of uh, interactive sessions uh, where experts are invited on our platform to share uh, the insights on different career prospects uh, and career transitions. Uh, this year, uh, we adapted the webinar format for the sessions. Uh, it is active and uh, running at the moment. Uh, we have seven sessions left. So if you're interested, uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, we had also successfully uh, conducted uh, this year's iteration of Teacher Topic. Uh, it is an online competition where competitors, competitors are judged uh, on their ability to uh, teach any topic of their choice uh, in the most comprehensive uh, and accessible manner. Uh, we had 50 submissions uh, this year, which is a big improvement from last year, and we have hope to carry forward this uh, trend to the next year. Uh, apart from our flagship programs, such as uh, Teach for Manipur and Beyond the Door, uh, we are also experimenting with uh, smaller projects, such as uh, Book Corner uh, and Movie Corner, uh, movie, movie Corner being the most recent edition. Uh, through these uh, smaller projects, we are exp exploring uh, unique and novel ways of learning uh, to organize discussion, discourse, well participation from uh, all uh, project members. Um, you might have also come across one of our popular talks from the Massive Open Talk 2019 uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, Massive Open Talk uh, is our mega event. Uh, I still consider it as the launching pit for, of our organization. Uh, if normalcy returns, hopefully, uh, we can organize an event of such scale in the near future. Uh, we also engage in healthy collaborations with uh, other parallel organizations in the state. Uh, our collaborative uh, effort with KKT has been a great learning experience for us, and we hope to build uh, a larger working community through uh, this collaboration in the years to come. Uh, finally, uh, we maintain a big repository of information on our official website and our YouTube channel. Uh, they are uh, accessible to all uh, free of course. So please check them out. 
And if you find our mission and vision to be meaningful, uh, please consider donating to our post. Uh, we run on donations and help from uh, our well-wishers. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, thanks once again to KKT uh, for giving me the platform. Uh, Dr. Neeraj, uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tinker Wangzam. It was a good insight about Mitsna activities in the last past few years. Uh, next, we will move with the proceedings. Before we start with the uh, professional lecture of Dr. Robindro, let me give a brief introduction about him. Dr. Robindro Lane Lakpam is presently working as a principal scientist and he is also heading the Electric Vehicle Technology Research Group in one of the CSIR lab in India, Indian Institute of Petroleum, which is stationed at Dehradun. He has more than 19 years of experience in electric vehicle power strength evaluation, performance study, drive cycle analysis, energy consumption studies, energy management, and efficiency studies, along with vehicle dynamics, automotive testing systems, especially laboratory and real world vehicle performance evaluation, both EV and ICEV. He has completed more than 10 research projects as a PI and involved in more than 25 research projects so far. He has published more than 15 papers in international and national journals and conferences. He has visited many countries like Belgium, Germany, Japan for specialized training on various automotive test system and vehicle emission measurement system during the last uh, 10 years. And we are very much sure that Dr. Robindro is experienced enough to highlight what is actually an electric vehicle, what are the things that we need to know to understand what is actually an electric vehicle. So with these few words, I would like to invite Dr. Robindro Lailalakpam to kindly proceed with the lecture. Uh, thank you, Dr. Niras, and the good afternoon, uh, good morning to all of you, and uh, my name is And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, KKT Impal and the Mitsna uh, for, for such a wonderful and excellent uh, platform to share our knowledge uh, to, the, uh, to the youths and the students of different uh, institutes. And uh, it is an excellent uh, platform for uh, knowledge sharing. And the, I would like to congratulate Misna for the wonderful uh, work they are doing for our society. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, present my uh, slide. I hope uh, I am audible enough. Yes, uh, loud and clear. Okay, all right. Is my slide visible? Uh, yes, uh, not in the, okay, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, yeah, and the, as I said, once again, uh, welcome to my slides, and I would like to have a very interactive uh, session, uh, which will include the animation as well as uh, videos of different technologies so that the participants can learn from this uh, presentation the basics of electric vehicle and the challenges that we are facing now and the opportunities that we are having presently and the uh, in future so my presentation is on the electric vehicle and its challenges and opportunities present in a future scenario and uh, it is under the uh, as is so promotion in science and technology theme so let's go forward. The content of my presentation will cover the introduction, the background of our uh, research, as well as the electric vehicle field, the motivation behind why we are going for electric vehicle, and the, what are the alternative vehicle and important system right now uh, in the transport sector. And uh, we will be talking about the uh, basic electric vehicle and uh, its subsystems. Then we will discuss the test methods and the procedures that we use for evaluation of different uh, electric vehicles. 
then we'll go for the comparison of different EVs uh, from the Indian market uh, perspective. And the uh, last but one, I will be talking about a durable roadmap for Manipur. Uh, it is an opportunity from the government side as well as our from our CSIR side. So I will be proposing something and uh, we'll try to find out the energetic uh, enterprises, those who are interested in this field. Then uh, at last, we will have the question and answer session where you can ask me any question regarding the presentation or uh, regarding any question in, uh, revolving around the electric vehicle technology. So let's go forward. Background of electric vehicle technology. As you all know, our country uh, imports 80 to 84% of total crude oil consumption from outside, from other foreign countries. Therefore, our Indian government desires to cut down the crude oil import by 10%. Uh, that is the reason why we are talking about the alternative fuels like ethanol, then biodiesel, so on and so forth. And uh, at present, India government has a flagship program called National Electric Mobility Mission 2020. And under which uh, we have FAM1. FAM stands for the fast adoption and manufacturing of uh, electric vehicle and the hybrid electric vehicle. So under FEM1, around uh, 700 crore was sanctioned and, and it was uh, finished by uh, last year, 2019, December. So under this FEM1, uh, we have the elect electric rickshaw, e rickshaw introduced uh, in Indian market. And uh, you might have seen uh, the e rickshaws everywhere in Indian cities uh, for last mile connectivity and the uh, short distance uh, commut uh, commut commutation. And then we have the FAM2 scheme it started uh, since 2020 and now is uh, still going on, under which we have around 10,000 crore uh, rupees. Most of the uh, budget is focused on infrastructure development like charging station uh, within a city and increasing the number of charging stations between the cities as well as on the highways. And the, the entire, uh, this mission targets to uh, the sales of six to seven millions of new electric vehicle, as well as hybrid electric vehicle uh, with a target to save uh, of two to 2.5 million tons of fuel by 2023. So this is a huge target government is having. And the why we are all doing this, all this mission under uh, a FAM scheme, that we have three objectives. One is the we need to have the country's energy security, and we need to have fuel saving so that we reduce the uh, foreign exchequer coming out of our country. And then at the same time, we need to have the benefit of environmental friendly transportation system. Then uh, what are the uh, driving forces behind the electric vehicle? Uh, we have the uh, Paris Climate Change Agreement, where India is a uh, signatory and we have the international obligation at UN uh, United States uh, United Nations uh, states and we have different UN programs so India is implementing it uh, very sincerely and at the same time we need to have the uh, very cleaner uh, uh, ambient air and uh, and then our third one is we need to reduce the import of oil so that we have the secure uh, energy for the country then uh, for one will be the uh, energy generation from the renewable source. These are the main driving forces uh, for uh, going for electric mobility. So what are the motivations behind the electric uh, vehicle? As you all know, the in recent time, all world is experiencing the impact of global warming and climate change everywhere. You, are, you might have seen in WhatsApp and uh, the social media, as well as in television, that wildfires in Greece, California, and Canada, and so on and so forth, and the floods everywhere in China, India, US, the Germany, and the Europe, European countries. These are the unprecedented, uh, unprecedented floods that have ever uh, occurred in Europe, and as well as in China and other parts. At the same time, we are experiencing the polar ice melting at very fast rate. Uh, there are already UN climate reports are already available on uh, public domain. And then at the same time, the food crisis in uh, African continent, it is a very serious 
food crisis that we are uh, the, our human mankind is facing in Yemen and the uh, South African countries. These are all impact of the global warming and the climate change. So and at the same time, the, the urbanization and the health problem due to the ever increasing vehicle population and the tailpipe emissions from the vehicle. And uh, as on today, uh, there are around uh, 4 billion people are living in mega cities and metropolitan cities who are susceptible and vulnerable to the air pollution and the related health issues. You can see one uh, pictorial representation on the right corner on the top. Uh, it is the two lungs representing uh, the two person. On the right side, one lungs is uh, blackened and which represents the lungs of a health, uh, of a, a person who exposed to the vehicle pollution and the uh, polluted environment. On the left side, a cleaner lungs, it is the lungs of a, a person who lives in a cleaner environment. So this study was conducted by uh, one health institute in Delhi. So you can imagine how much the uh, vehicle and the, the air pollution is causing hazard to human health. And uh, the graph below shows the ever increasing vehicle population. These vehicles uh, are predominantly uh, the diesel and the petrol vehicles. So in India, uh, around, uh, I think around six to seven million in use vehicles are there, those who are having uh, polluting causes, the pollution causes. So these are the main concerns that motivation behind why we are going for cleaner transportation system. And now uh, we will discuss about the alternative uh, vehicle technologies. So right now uh, we have different vehicle technologies available in market and starting from the left corner on the top we, we have the CNG, LPG, and ethanol blended uh, power vehicles. As you all know, uh, this I am not going to cover much. So then we have the hybrid electric vehicles. So you might have noticed in some new vehicles, they're uh, written as the micro hybrid and hybrid system like uh, Maruti, Suzuki, Sias, and the other uh, Mahindra and Mahindra Scorpio. So uh, there are mild hybrid, different hybrids. Again, hybrid is the another uh, intermittent uh, solution in between the IC engine technology and electric vehicle. So now we come to the electric vehicle where we don't have the petrol and the diesel uh, engine. So we don't have any problem for uh, tailpipe emission which is causing air pollution. The uh, electric vehicle is completely different from the IC engine where we don't have uh, the IC engine based propulsion power system. System in electric vehicle we have the electric motor and a drive system that we are going to discuss in detail uh, in next few slides. And then uh, at the last but last one on the top, uh, the fuel cell technology. It is basically the primary source of energy is the hydrogen. And uh, recently our prime minister has announced the. Uh, the hydrogen mission for the country during uh, 15 August uh, celebration. So these are the roadmap for uh, hydrogen mission for the country. So in the fuel cell technology, uh, there will be a fuel cell, which is the device to convert the hydrogen into the electricity. That electricity will be stored in the uh, onboard batteries. Then you run the vehicle. So that is the uh, fuel cell technology. So we are not going to cover the fuel cell as well. We will focus on the electric vehicle. Now, uh, going going directly to the going uh, before going directly to the electric vehicle. So I would like to discuss a little bit about the different uh, vehicle pattern system available right now. Uh, the, on the left side, ICE uh, stands for the IC engine vehicle. So here you can see the four wheels. Then it is a, a top view pictorial representation. Then you have the uh, fuel tank and you have the IC engine. So it is a very simple, you have the energy source uh, uh, the, in, the, in the form of chemicals. Then inside the IC engine, your chemical energy is converted into the mechanical energy and that, that propels the vehicle forward. There is the IC engine. And uh, the next one is the uh, hybrid uh, technology. That's uh, this I am not going to cover 
much because uh, to save time, so let's focus on the electric vehicle. So after this presentation, I will uh, show you a video so that you will understand uh, what is the hybrid. Uh, instead of I explain you and the, uh, the video will be more, uh, you can say, uh, more educational uh, for the viewers. And uh, in the electric vehicle, uh, we have the propulsion uh, propulsion system is uh, powered by the electric battery and which is uh, again powering the electric motor and drive system and uh, uh, this is a very simple uh, topology that uh, that represents the electric vehicle uh, now uh, let's come a little bit technical uh, inside the electric vehicle so you can see on the diagram uh, the pictorial diagram that this this is the uh, the AC compressor for the car and the AC blower. We have the electric motor and the drive system on the back side. And uh, this vehicle is basically rear drive system. That's why the motor and drive system is on the rear wheels. And we have the battery connected and uh, mounted at the middle of the vehicle so that the center of gravity of the vehicle is taken care and your safety and your handling and as well as the stability is maintained. Then we go uh, uh, the component wise, uh, you can subsystem on the block diagram, you can see the front wheel and the here is the reduction gear. Reduction gear is connected to the electric motor and the electric motor is uh, driven and controlled by the electric drive system. Basically it is the electric motor come the inverter. Then again, this controller is connected to the battery and the battery powers this uh, motor drive system. Then we have a DC-DC converter. DC-DC converter basically converts uh, the higher battery voltage down to the 12 volt uh, DC voltage, which is required for powering the uh, in-vehicle infotainment and electrical equipment like horn, light, uh, and so on and so forth, which runs on the 12 volt, uh, 12 volt power. So this is a, a simple pictorial uh, diagram of an electric vehicle, very, very simple. Then uh, those who are working in uh, electric vehicle area, so uh, they can find their area of interest in terms of uh, component level, maybe in the electric motor or electric drive system, battery, DC-DC converter, or uh, your gear system. And now uh, the main part of the electric vehicle technology is the electric vehicle motor selection. It is very, very important that uh, we need to select a very right motor and the appropriate motor, which has the uh, proper power and the torque uh, combination. So uh, electric motors are basically broadly divided into two categories. One is the DC motors and the AC motors. Uh, those who are from the electrical and the electronic side, uh, these are not new for them, but I am not going to explain in detail, uh, but I will explain you uh, the AC motors which are predominantly used in the electric vehicle industries. We also use uh, AC motors uh, because of so many advantages and the other technical uh, uh, pros. So uh, under the AC motor, we have the induction uh, motor and then synchronous from the permanent magnet motor and the permanent magnet motor, we have the uh, uh, synchronous permanent magnet motor, then uh, uh, brushless DC motor, as well as the hybrid. And the fourth one is the switch reluctant motor. And for our research, we use the induction motor, uh, reason being that it doesn't use the permanent magnet materials, because if we use the uh, permanent magnet based motor, then we will keep on importing the uh, raw materials from other countries. So basically we are working on, on a technology which, is, which can be uh, completely self-reliant and uh, completely, it can be completely import substitution so that we, can, uh, we don't uh, rely on other countries to fulfill the government's direction of Atma Nirgar. And the, and the second one, the factors to be considered while uh, we select the uh, EV motors, these are very important factors that we need to consider. 
uh, the frequent start stop uh, of the uh, vehicle, for example, like a traffic, uh, how frequently you start and stop. Uh, those are conditions that you have to cover while you are selecting the electric motor. And uh, you need to see high rate of acceleration and deacceleration because every driver has a different style of driving. So we need to consider all those factors and the high torque, low speed. Basically, it is a hill climbing and uh, then low torque and the cruising here. We need the high speed, but low torque for the uh, high speed operation. That's why we need a very wide speed range of operation for EV motor uh, that we are uh, planning to design or deploy on our uh, uh, vehicle. So uh, before going further, I would like to show you one video so that uh, we understand what the technology and uh, we understand better. Is it visible? Uh, not yet. Okay, all right. So I think uh, I should share again. Yeah, kindly share. Uh, All right. We are still stuck with your EV motor selection slide. All right. Is it visible now? Uh, we can see your desktop screen. Now? Uh, I think it will take a bit of few seconds. Still it is not coming. We can see the list of videos. Now? Yes, yes, it is coming. Yes, yeah. one series ICVC. Yeah. Trying to drive SUVs at light trucks under full electric power to achieve over 100 miles per gallon in typical local daily driving. The vehicle is propelled by a 200 kilowatt Simatron enhanced AC induction motor and drive system designed by Via Motors. It is one of the most powerful electric motors offered in a passenger vehicle today. The traction motor will also provide regenerative braking to help recharge the batteries and help slow the vehicle. The high power Simatron controller drives the motor at maximum efficiency using proprietary control algorithms. All vehicle systems are controlled by the hybrid master controller. Performance is delivered through a high performance automatic transmission and transfer case, sharing power through the front and rear axles, maintaining the performance of full powered four wheel drive SUVs. Advanced technology lithium ion batteries deliver 700 volts of DC power directly to the three phase inverter, eliminating a DC to DC converter. High power architecture helps improve system efficiency and reduce manufacturing costs. Liquid cooled battery packs are safely mounted between frame rails to provide 40 miles of electric range under full electric power. They can be recharged conveniently at home using a standard 110 or 220 volt outlet. Batteries can also be charged rapidly and efficiently by the onboard 100 kilowatt Simitron enhanced PM synchronous generator. The generator also provides direct power to the electric motor when the batteries are low. The Simitron PM generator was custom designed to match the most efficient operating speeds of the combustion engine. This allows the engine to operate only at its peak efficiency range and only when needed to recharge the lithium ion batteries. This is an electric vehicle with a range extender.
Most SUVs and trucks of this size require a large V8 combustion engine. In Via Motor's plug-in series hybrid architecture, the combustion engine is only used occasionally to recharge the batteries. A much smaller, more efficient 1 to 2 liter combustion engine can replace the stock 5 to 6 liter engines. The combustion engine is connected only to the electric generator and is not connected to the drive system. The engine is only used to generate electricity and to recharge the batteries when the vehicle drives beyond its 40 mile battery range. And when driving beyond battery range, a vehicle using Via Motors electric drive system should get twice the highway gas fuel economy over the base vehicle. This is primarily achieved by operating the engine only at its peak efficiency of approximately 30% to recharge batteries rather than at the average of 15% efficiency when accelerating the vehicle. Advanced plug-in series hybrid drive system by Via Motors will enable larger vehicles, including SUVs and light trucks, to drive up to 40 miles in all-electric mode on clean, renewable electric fuel with near zero emissions. For most drivers, this means over 100 miles per gallon in typical local daily driving at about five cents per mile. Okay, now uh, back to the presentation. Am I uh, audible? Yes. Uh, uh, is the slide visible now? Yes, yeah. we have seen the slide number nine. Okay, all right. Uh, the EV motor selection, right? Yeah, can you come to full screen mode? Okay, please continue. Yeah, and now uh, we have seen the, the selection, the importance of the right selection of electric uh, vehicle motors. So now come to the EV motor sizing, why we need uh, sizing and uh, how important the sizing of an EV motor. So why we do sizing basically uh, because to fulfill the, the torque and power requirement at different uh, vehicle operating condition. So let's take an example. For example, we have the uh, Rated power is a 12 kilowatt, then uh, rated torque is 29 Newton meter, that uh, base RPM is the speed of the, uh, the rotor of the motor is 4,000 RPM. At gradient zero, that means the flat surface, the maximum speed we, uh, we design is the 70 kilometer per hour, then maximum power uh, this much and the maximum torque this much. Then we need the gear ratio of one, one is to 13.5 to achieve these uh, technical specifications. And uh, these are the, uh, these are the reason why we need to select the uh, power, uh, the gear ratio depends on our selection of electric motor, depends on our selection of the vehicle segment. Then for example, for the same electric uh, motor, if we uh, go for a little uphill climbing, say 10, per, uh, 10 degree gradient, then we, uh, we will have the more torque and more power, but uh, the vehicle speed will be reduced. These are the conditions that we have to see uh, all the permutation and combination, as well as the, uh, the simulation study, so that we decide the uh, correct and right gear ratio, so that we have the right torque and the power at different uh, operating condition. Then for uh, now, uh, let's go a little more detail on how the torque and the power characteristic of an electric uh, motor, basically the uh, AC electric motor, you can see on the left side, the, the X axis represents the torque in Newton meter on Y axis, the speed in RPM. So uh, the red one represents the graph of the power Depends and the, the blue one represents the uh, the curve or the top top. You can see even at zero, uh, the top is is the highest. That is the uh, basic difference between the IC engine and the electric motor. In electric motor, you have the maximum torque from zero to uh, two thousand RPM for this particular electric motor. 
but in case of ic engine your uh, maximum torque will be around 2000 to 3000 because your curve will be like this uh, similar to the power curve your torque will be zero uh, at zero that's why we need idling speed for ic engine vehicles so ic engine vehicle has a minimum rpm which runs at idling condition like uh, 700 to 800 rpm that's why we cannot switch off the ic engine even at the uh, the traffic point and the stoppage and uh, the second one is depends on the your vehicle segment and a selection of electric power uh, electric motor power and torque then we need to select the motor cooling uh, system whether the electric motor should be air cool or uh, water cool these are very important because your vehicle will be running around 100 150 or some vehicle has around 300 kilometer range so for that distance the uh, the electric motor should not get heat off so uh, the cooling system has to take care of this so for the smaller vehicles only uh, the air cool with the uh, air fins is sufficient enough to cool down but for big, bigger uh, vehicles say bigger than suv sizes then uh, you need the water cool now come to the another very important uh, component of an electric vehicle is the battery battery selection and sizing so for our research study and for all the commercial uh, the passenger vehicles available in market they use lithium ion battery uh, the li feo or is a lithium phosphorus the different chemicals they are using so the reason behind uh, using of lithium ion battery is the uh, we have the maximum energy density at uh, minimum weight uh, this diagram shows that for example like uh, for a particular volume or size of a battery uh, the lithium ion battery will be having the highest energy density that is the uh, simple term that i will use it uh, for the same size lead acid battery will have the less energy density that means uh, the lead acid battery will run out will run out of the source uh, quickly and lithium ion battery will still have the uh, source uh, for a longer duration uh, for the same volume and the size of the battery and these are some samples of the uh, lithium ion battery used in the electric vehicle. Here we have the lithium uh, phosphorus. Yeah, I think this is a chemical term, so I don't exactly don't know zero for what uh, what is this. And uh, these are the uh, the you can say cost analysis of the uh, lithium ion battery. In the last ten years, the cost has come down the the dollar per kilowatt hour has come down now we are at 2022 so we are fortunate to have uh lithium ion cost less than 200 dollars per kilowatt hour so it is a very good sign that there will be more electric vehicles on road because battery is the one of the uh, most expensive part in electric vehicle and now we come to the uh, EV powertrain configuration here configuration uh, is uh, basically it is the topology that how we position our electric motor uh, along with the drive system whether it is a, a front wheel or rear wheel drive that we are going to discuss so the choices of drive system in an electric vehicle include mainly propulsion mode such as the front wheel drive rear wheel drive or all four wheel drive system like you uh, experience on road most of the passenger cars in india are front wheel drive a uh, few few of them are rear wheel drive for example like uh, mahindra bolero they are rear wheel drive there are advantages and disadvantages for all uh, different modes so that i am not going to cover that and the second one is the number of electric motors that you are planning to use in an electric vehicle whether you are going to use single motor or dual motor or uh, more than two motors. Then third one, drive approach. Uh, for example, we are, whether we are going to adopt the indirect drive system or direct uh, drive system. Like uh, direct drive system example is the e-rickshaw. E -rickshaw, you can see uh, the motor directly connected to the rear wheel differential. You might have noticed in uh, uh, the cities. 
The last one is the number of transmission levers, whether we are going to use single gear system or dual gear, but for electric vehicle, multi-gear system is not recommended uh, for uh, cost cutting and the other beneficial uh, and the technical advantages. And the last one, the vari variation in uh, primary, uh, primary energy source, uh, whether we are going to use only the uh, battery or uh, a combination of battery with supercapacitor or some other energy uh, sources like uh, uh, the different type of batteries there, there are now uh, under research stage like sodium ion, uh, sodium base and the other, uh, uh, I forgot other material. So those are the other combinations. And uh, now we focus on the six possible drive train system in an electric vehicle. On the left of, we have the, uh, the topology that includes the electric motor connected with, uh, with the clutch and the gearbox. And then to the differential, this stands for the differential on the diagram. GB stands for the gearbox. So basically, this uh, topology is the uh, basic classical uh, drive train system where your IC engine is replaced by the electric motor. So that is the simple uh, uh, the configuration. And the second one, we are going to use without clutch, but we have the fixed gear. So here, like uh, we have a single gear system, like we use in Tesla. Tesla cars, they have a single gear system. So they are fixed along with the motor and the drive train. So we can't change the gear here. And then uh, third one uh, is the uh, electric motor, which is directly connected to the drive. Uh, the differential, it is a typical example is the e-rickshaws that I explained to you. This you can uh, see visually as and when uh, you are uh, convenient and free. Then la the, the left one on the fourth one is the uh, cascade motors drive train. Here we use two electric motors connected on a single common axle. So uh, this such type of topology is very powerful because of the uh, presence of two electric motor and but the control system becomes very complex because of the two electric motors presence and the fifth one in will uh, in will with reduction gear here your electric motor is directly connected to the uh, rear wheel with the uh, uh, reduction gear and the one electric motor on the right and the, uh, one electric motor on the left wheel so here again there is no common axle then again, the, uh, your control algorithm will be uh, more complex uh, because of the two electric motors presence and without any common axle. So last one is the, uh, your in-wheel direct drive system. So basically your wheel rim itself is the uh, electric motor and it is a hub motor, we call it, hub electric motor like you have uh, small mopeds you have seen in market, those who are uh, those mopeds have the electric motor directly inbuilt on their uh, wheel. So here I will just uh, give you one example of this half electric motor with all wheel drives. So uh, please stay and I will share you a video so that you will understand how the uh, half electric motor having all wheel drive system. Is it visible now, Vidu? Yes. Uh... OK. This is an innovative and ingenious cross-country vehicle. Swing Car East Fighter is a new mode of travel with extreme off-road capability. The small electric buggy has four drive wheels with independent steering, and this gives it an amazing cross-country driving ability from the hills and valleys, on sand, and in the snow. The incredible amplitude of movement of the four articulated legs means swim car can't be driven up and down slopes and across even the most difficult ground. Pascal Rambo designed the swim car e-spider using the concept of the pendulum. 
The pendulum design means the yeast fighter tilts on a bend that stays level on slopes. On the most rugged terrain, the articulated legs splay out, so the wheels maintain contact with the ground and the driver's seat remains horizontal. The vehicle has a particularly low center of gravity, resulting in a natural balance and a feeling of stability and safety. All the controls are grouped around the steering wheel and easy to use and reach. The lithium batteries give Swin Car a range of four hours or 62 miles on the flat and up to four hours cross country, including 1,000 meters of climbing. The engine brake recharges the batteries when going downhill. This regenerative braking further improves the range. The pleasures of driving a single seater e spider are exceptional, but many of you may want to share the pleasure of the ride. Swing Car has designed a two seater e spider tandem with a passenger seat installed. Okay, all right. I think time is uh, moving very fast, so I need to cover the presentation very fast now. Okay, back to the presentation. So uh, now let's talk about the transmission and the gear ratio, how we calculate and how your gear ratio is uh, connected to your uh, force on individual wheels and the torque on individual wheels. Uh, these are the simple, uh, the, uh, the mathematical equation for torque. You can see on the left top, uh, this uh, particular presentation, you can see uh, let on and replay it and uh, try to understand it. So I will uh, explain you the basic things on looking at the diagram. So here we have the uh, electric motor and electric motor top TM is here. Then TM is converted to, t to this, uh, uh, the gear top, TZ means gear top. And with the uh, K0, naught. K0 naught is the, uh, the gear ratio. Then with this gear ratio, you multiply with TM and the K naught, then you have the uh, torque on this uh, gear wheel. That is how you transfer this motor torque onto this torque of the differential. Then once you have this torque on a differential, this is again divided into two equal torques, and a torque on the right wheel and a torque on the left wheel. Once you have the torque value, and then you can calculate the force on each wheel, left wheel and right wheel. That is how you calculate the force on each wheel. These force are important uh, for the lab study and uh, for determination of other uh, the coefficients that we, uh, we need for uh, laboratory studies. So due to many advantages and technical simplicity reported in uh, Retracer, the single speed drive train is selected for our study and it is beneficial from other technical uh, perspectives. So it is also easier to minimize the cost volume, energy cost and the drive, uh, the drive trend mass. So uh, now why I said the forces are required because you can see this, uh, this is the pictorial diagram of a car uh, moving on different uh, terrains, like maybe on the flat surface, maybe uh, hill climbing. So these different forces acting on a moving vehicle, uh, F1, F2, and the F0, then how they're uh, calculated. And uh, there are standard formula to calculate and correlate with all these parameters. Alpha uh, represents your gradient angle. So alpha, if is alpha is zero, then you are driving on the flat surface. When alpha is uh, five, 10, whatever, that, that means you are driving on a terrain and the uphill. So there are uh, different methods. So I will uh, show you one video so that you can understand from the skeleton point of view quickly. I will show you a video so that you understand how uh, these things look. Okay. Automobile and, or simply a gear. or simply a gearbox, has been serving automobiles well for many decades. The actual... 
but uh, here you can see that the skeleton of a, a car, you can see the differential, then uh, the drive shaft, then differential here. You have a gap box, then uh, instead of this engine, uh, we can say from the electric vehicle point of view, it is an electric motor. Then we have a, a gear system. It can be a single gear and dual gear system. Then we have a drive shaft, which is connected to the differential. Then forces, your rotational forces trans, uh, transport from your electric motor through this uh, drive train system to your wheel. This is how uh, uh, the electric motor goes yeah. the transmission before it reaches the drive wheels. The function of the transmission is to control the speed and torque available to the drive wheels for different driving conditions. Want to climb a hill, you need more torque. By reducing the speed at the transmission, we will be able to achieve higher torque for the same power input. The torque demand is low, we can increase the transmission speed. It's inner workings. Transmissions work on the simple principle of gear ratio. The transmission mechanism is shown here. Input and output shafts are connected through a counter shaft. A three speed mechanism will look like this. Just by sliding the gears, we can achieve different transmission ratios. Or specifically called a sliding mesh transmission. All right, that was the uh, basic, how you uh, transfer the rotational force from the electric motor uh, to the wheel. So now back to the uh, presentation. Now we go ahead. Then uh, next comes the test methods and the procedure that we follow it up once you have the electric vehicle. Then uh, normally in India, we follow the automotive industry standard. Uh, acronym is AIS standards. Though there are so many AIS standards. Uh, these are the standards for the country as far as the Central Motor Vehicle Rules Act 1989. And we simply call it Central Motor Vehicle Rule Homologation Requirement. Homologation requirement means the certification requirement for a new vehicle before launching in, uh, in the market. Every vehicle has to uh, qualify and uh, fulfill the uh, standards. So I will skip it quickly and go up to the next. Uh, Uh, we have we have the test methods and the equipments that uh, we use once we have the vehicle. So we have the digital uh, uh, digital vehicle wetment system so that we measure the vehicle on each wheel so that we do the proper weight distribution analysis. Then to have a, a, a from the safety and the uh, stability uh, perspective that we need to do this uh, weight balance and wet distribution analysis. Then we have the power analyzer to measure all the electrical pa parameters of the electric vehicle. Then we have the uh, global positioning system data logger. These are required along with the various sensors uh, for the vehicle to be tested on real traffic road, as well as in the real uh, world conditions. And uh, these are the, some stages of the experimental setup. For example, in laboratory, we have uh, the laboratory setup and the vehicle is tested on a chassis dynamometer, basically a roller, uh, a computer control roller, then uh, equipments are used. Then we have the real world, real traffic test. These are the few stages and the experimental setup that we need to uh, do it for every. So here you can see how the vehicle is tested uh, inside the laboratory for road load simulation. We call it chassis dynamometer. You, you may have a look. Some, some of you may be uh, knowing that what is a chassis dynamometer. Here, your driving cycle is loaded 
and the driver's app, we call this system as a driver's app, a computer desk system where we install and configure the standard driving cycle. Then the test drivers look at the speed profile of the driving cycle and it follows the speed profile, doing the acceleration, deacceleration, and applying brakes as if you are driving on road. This is the simulation test that we are trying to simulate the road condition inside the laboratory following this driving cycle. This is how we do the standard test in laboratory. All right, now go to the next slide. We uh, have the slide for different driving cycles that we use in India. All the automotive industries in India, they use these three driving cycles. De uh, depends on the vehicle segment, right? So I go quickly. Then uh, we have the results and discussion, for example, on, from the laboratory tests. We have the study speed uh, test where uh, we do the testing at uh, the constant speed like 20 km per hour, 40 km per hour, and 60 km per hour, per hour and record the, all the electrical parameters for post-processing. And we analyze the data to look at the different electrical parameters and find out the area of improvement as well as area of uh, problem that we will be further uh, under, undergoing the uh, research study for improvement and uh, energy efficiency improvement and so on and so forth. Uh, these are the uh, representation of the Indian driving cycle and the corresponding uh, test data. This is how we see the recorded test data uh, after the post-processing analysis. The total line represents the uh, uh, your actual vehicle speed and the, the blue line represents the, your uh, set points, that is the driving cycle, and your blue and red represents the other vehicle uh, parameters. Yeah, on the left and right, the axis, you can see the parameters that we are uh, uh, we are analyzing. This is how we do it. And uh, similarly, we do uh, for a similar uh, electrical parameters from the road study, from the field trials. Then we uh, again do the same thing that we uh, are trying to find out the boundary conditions of all those electrical parameters so that they are useful for uh, useful in de designing the EV components and subsystems because uh, we need to know the maximum current drawn as well as uh, the rate of acceleration for designing of the electric battery uh, battery system and the BMS system, so on and so forth. And uh, we have done one uh, case study in our uh, laboratory. We have converted one all uh, uh, pollution causing IC engine vehicles that we converted into electric vehicles. So we have done a, a laboratory study. So before electric conversion, these are the vehicle pollutants that was emitting from the uh, vehicle. So you can see the how much, how much pollutants uh, that vehicle was emitting. If you multiply by the, the distance run and the distance covered by the vehicle, you, it will be in terms of uh, exponential. If simply uh, multiply by 1,000, after running 1,000 kilometer, you may imagine how much uh, the vehicle was polluting and the, uh, causing a lot of health concerns for, in, for the uh, humanity as well as environment. Then you can see after electric conversion, so zero vehicle emissions. These are the little comparison that we have done it. And now we come to the comparison of two wheelers that are available right now. Uh, and uh, they, are, uh, they are lined up for launch in India. These are the different uh, two wheelers. They are going to be available and already available in India. You can see the Ola is coming up with the 10 colors. I think you might have seen from the WhatsApp messages as well as other so social media uh, platforms. These are the different uh, the models that you will be seeing on Indian roads very soon. And then uh, similarly, we have 
uh, we have comparison for four wheelers. Uh, presently, this is for uh, SUV series. Then we have the MG Hector ZS EV and the Hyundai Kona and the Tata Nexon EV. Uh, these are already commercially available in India. And uh, these are the little comparison uh, among the uh, uh, powertrain system of the four, uh, the, 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 the three vehicles. Uh, then you can see the power, torque, gearbox. These are a different uh, the comparison between these three uh, vehicles. And you can see the cost as well, uh, the X room cost for all these three uh, vehicles. So cost is one of the major factor for uh, Indian market because everybody will be asking about the cost uh, in Indian market. And now this is again comparison with other uh, foreign players that already are planning to come in, in India as well as already available uh, in other countries. Like Tesla is already has come to India and they are planning to launch a uh, vehicle or maybe they will import their already existing model and assemble here, it, here and sell in uh, India. So they are testing Indian conditions and observing and doing survey uh, of India, uh, India's Indian market. So these are the uh, foreign companies and their model comparison, uh, comparison between, uh, between the EV models of BMW and the Tesla model. So these things you can uh, replay and review it, those who are interested and uh, have a relook. So I will go little fast. And uh, this is the future uh, scenario that we are going to uh, experience in uh, next five to 10 years. I will play one after one. ultimate implementation with accuracy. Using the smartphone, having an app ordering a photocopter for the next photo port review, the photocopter will come autonomously, pick you up and take you to your destination. Crawl sideways like a crab. Look at that. Isn't that insane? This is the Mercedes Vision ABTR. You're going to see it on the roads for the very first time. There's so <laughs> Uh, participants are requested to kindly. Oh, we are quite happy to be in Berlin, Germany's capital city. Uh, we are very happy here to present our e rocket to more than 40,000 visitors in only two and a half days. What is so special about the e rocket? In the world, you need a motorcycle license because it's quite fast. It goes up to 90 kilometers per hour top speed. It has a range of 120 kilometers before you even have to go to your first charging. It's a very fascinating motorcycle. And I can promise you it has the most fun factor in riding 
from all the two wheelers on the globe. You say it's a human hybrid. What does it mean? The human hybrid means for us, the rider is the center of the universe, of its riding universe. Because with the pedaling, you are in a constant exchange with your bicycle, with your motorcycle, excuse me. It's a very, very important point that if you don't pedal, you don't move. If you pedal, you move. But you manage also the speed of your pedaling, how fast or not fast you want to move. That has been proven by a ton of test riders, and it's the fun of your life to ride the e-rocket. I bet on that. Uh, just a few words about the quality of the bike. All right, we go to next slide. Uh, am I audible? Yes, uh, you are audible. All right. So now we come to the uh, roadmap for Manipur. Uh, this we are going to discuss uh, a little bit, but uh, it is a platform. Uh, can somebody please mute? Okay, all right. So uh, this is the electric conversion of two in-use IC vehicles into pure EV, as I explained you earlier. It is as per the new legislation, new gazetted notification, GSR 167E. So the Indian government has allowed to convert an uh, in-use IC engine vehicle into electric vehicle, then make it operational and certify it and get registered with the green number plate. So this is allowed now. Before two years ago, it was not allowed. There was no legislation. Now legislation is there. All the stakeholders has to refer to this GSR 167 for such research study. So we have already done the uh, research in this line. And uh, we are the people behind this GSR 167. This is our introduction. We had series of meetings with uh, top ranking officials and minister of uh, MRTIs. So this we have done it, and the uh, so the main agenda is to save uh, our resource from scrapping and from uh, going to waste. Because you can imagine, as on today, if we if we scrap ten lakh vehicles, and then where do we do where do we keep all those vehicles and the uh, the huge resource that we are going to waste and the energy that we are uh, going to waste for uh, scrapping of 10 lakh vehicle and so on and so forth. It is a huge energy waste as well as our resource. So that's why instead of scrapping, so many vehicles are as good as new one because of the individual use. So uh, the Supreme Court says that 15 years older, more than 15 years, all vehicles has to be scrapped and uh, uh, it cannot be operated on road anymore. So we are giving a solution for that. So the kit is already uh, available in the international market, but this is going to be indigenous uh, Indian Mac kit. So right now, Indian Mac kits are not available. All the kits available are imported from other countries. That is basically uh, against the Atman Nirvar vision. That's why the, our work is uh, focusing on having uh, indigenous local kit uh, to fulfill and align with our government's objectives. So I am sitting next to the former our Minister of Science and Technology. Uh, he and himself had the test ride of our uh, electric vehicle. Uh, and now uh, the objective of our roadmap is we are planning um, for an uh, incubation center at Impal, uh, which will accommodate and which will train and uh, give a helping hand for the interested enterprises. Those who are already registered with MSME and have the uh, the uh, prerequisite requirement, and uh, the main objective is to nurture, engage, and encourage those five startup companies for initial purpose and for progressive, innovative, 
EV development work under the mentorship of our laboratory. And we are planning to uh, planning to promote and expand our EVs retrofit and development work for three-wheeler and L5 category vehicles. Then uh, next is that we'll five prototypes uh, in Manipur. Then we will have the mini pilot project for demonstration of 525 electric vehicles of such type in Manipur. Then we will go for a type approval procedure. Then we will attempt for a sustainable ecosystem of electric mobility in the state. So we need to join the stakeholders together and we need to identify and uh, uh, give the hand-holding opportunities. These are the, our, uh, our outline uh, plan and outline roadmap uh, for Manipur. Separately, those who are interested, you can contact me uh, at my email ID that will be given at the last. So then uh, I will, we will, you need to fill up a, one uh, a Google, a Google form, then based on that, uh, we will contact you further or area of interest and so on and so forth that we will discuss offline. Then partnership under the CSR and Industry Connect, we will support you with the engineering know-how uh, from our side uh, for the startup companies. Then uh, we'll engage and influence those all local educated youths through the online webinars from time to time. Then if needed, we will arrange the offline interac interaction program uh, maybe at Impal or maybe at Deradun or somewhere that will work out. Then uh, we will have the uh, uh, opportunity for uh, uh, visiting our laboratory and the other uh, relevant laboratories for the startup companies for knowledge enhancement as well as the uh, yoga technology exposure. Then uh, we will connect you to the right suppliers and the component manufacturers. That, that's why we call it material uh, resource information and sharing and connection. So these are the uh, some uh, outline of that we are planning. So uh, so we are uh, uh, trying to find the interested and the uh, the persons and expertise those who have enthusiasm and a fire in valley inside the valley. So and that uh, we are uh, we will very soon have a consortium. Already consortium is already in the formation. And once uh, once we have the uh, credential of the expertises and their. Uh, prerequisite requirements, then uh, we'll connect to the consortium and uh, try to connect all the dots and uh, uh, do something useful for the state and for the country. And uh, uh, the objective is to make our state better and our uh, country better place. And now uh, as a part of the conclusion, uh, I only refer to the latest ICCT report from the United Nations, the uh, climate change report. It says that your, from the life cycle analysis, your uh, GIZ, greenhouse gas emissions from the other uh, conventional vehicles will be more than the battery operated electric vehicles. You can see here, and the you can see the distribution of their parameters. See, I leave it to you and you can go through it. And this report is available on public domain. This report is uh, uh, made by the ICCT, uh, the acronym stands for the International Council on Tech, uh, Clean Trans uh, Transportation, July 2021 report. So this is the latest report, you can go through it. And uh, it is just uh, indication that, uh, so it shows the projection uh, starting from 2021 to 2030 uh, years. So you can see uh, how much which type of vehicle will be contributing the GIZ emissions globally then you can see here the battery operated, that means electric vehicle having the energy source from the renewable uh, energy, then we'll have the lowest GIZ emission compared to others. So notice being in the, uh, you can say biodiversity area and the hot belt of hydropower uh, projects. So it is very suitable for us. We can tap the uh, renewable energy. Uh, these are the, some uh, numerical values that uh, I would like to uh, go through it for more information. So at last, so the statement made by the ICCP report July 21 is the only battery electro and hydrogen vehicle uh, vehicles have the potential to achieve the magnitude of life cycle GAC emissions reductions needed to meet the uh, Paris uh, Agreement goals. And to align the Paris Agreement targets, the registration of new combustion engine vehicles that is petrol diesel vehicles should be tested out 
in the year 2030 to 35 in frame otherwise we will have problem like right now the uh, the global warming problem that you have face it the target of 1.5 celsius degree uh, global warming target has to be sensed from 1.5 to 2.2 uh, uh, degrees celsius that will have a very irreversible impact on our planet so with this i thank you very much for your kind attention and the patient attention so the forum is open to you and my email id is given to you those who are interested and you can contact me and uh, and uh, i am i am all here for you thank you niras and over to you yeah uh, thank you dr robindro uh, it was a very nice and very motivating talk uh, very much starting from the basics of electric vehicle and detailed elaboration of all the components of an electric vehicle then coming back uh, coming forward to the regulations where after making the electric vehicle how what are the steps to be proceed uh, proceed in india and uh, most importantly uh, the futuristic approach that you have shared us and uh, finally the road map from manipur and uh, <clears throat> just starting with the question and answer session i will open the forum uh, for the participant to raise your question so before you raise your question uh, you can your raise your hand and head off and i will invite or call their names one by one so anyone who want to ask some questions so dr robindra while uh, uh, i have a one small question uh, looking at this electric vehicle uh, <clears throat> we have this uh, battery source power source then it gives energy to the vehicle and it it makes the electric vehicle move now uh, is there any possibility that key with the available energy like sunlight wind we can again recharge the power source making the whole vehicle a completely self reliable vehicle so is this such kind of thing is possible in future yes uh, thank you niras for such nice question yeah i would say yes it is possible and uh, that's called we call it sustainable electric mobility solution that's why the word comes this sustainable so when we say sustainable uh, the your energy source has to be su sustainable as well as renewable like wind solar uh, that will be forever so it depends on your ge geographical location these renewable energies we can tap it and we can uh, we can use it for our different purpose as well, like domestic use and uh, in our purpose we can use for recharging the electric vehicle uh, that is very much possible yeah uh, there is one question for from sofia uh, sofia uh, can you ask your question Uh, Sophia, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, my question is. Devasis, uh, can you? Okay, fine. Now, uh, Sophia, please continue with your question. Yes, sir. If there is no electric while using this kind of electric vehicle, what can we do, sir? Okay, all right. The question is, if there is no electricity, right? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if there is no electricity, then our civilization civilization will go back to the dark as there will be electric uh, electricity always. Either it is from the hydropower or solar or wind, or then uh, biomass to uh, biogas conversion. Then uh, we have different sources of energy. and you how uh, we are uh, in 21st century definitely there will be electricity and the only thing is that availability of the electric electricity will be how long that will be a question from place to place but i think uh, as i see and observe all over the country in the last 10 15 years uh, the supply of electricity everywhere it has improved a lot 
compared to the condition uh, in 1990s. So uh, I think and the other all agencies and the uh, research organizations and government agencies already working in different uh, areas of uh, energy source and uh, they are planning for like recently Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister has announced 450 gigawatt solar power, uh, power system. These are, uh, these are the huge target. So even only from solar, we are, uh, the country is planning for 450 gigawatt, just a huge power. So these are all possible. Anyway, India uh, first target is to have the uh, self-sufficient, uh, the energy independent country. That is the first target of the country, that country is moving forward. I'm sure that uh, in future also, there will not be any problem for electricity. I hope I answer your question. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and, and additionally, I think very recently in August 15, uh, our Honorable Prime Minister has also launched the hydrogen fuel cell mission program. So yeah. it will also give a huge amount of energy. Yes. So, yeah. Any, anybody else? Yes, uh, uh, okay, please continue. Yeah, anybody else has any question? You can yeah, ask. Michael, Michael at home. Sir, I have a question too. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir uh, actually, uh, I am Michael. Uh, I'm currently a third year student, BTEC, elect uh, electrical and electronics. So okay. I'm currently third year in which plan. So I have a few questions. First question is like, uh, if in my second year, I did an internship on comparison of batteries for EV. It was for batteries, but uh, is there any possibility of an internship in uh, IIP there are than like maybe a two uh, two months summer internship or that uh, six months the longer one. So is there any possibility for any enthusiast to come and work in your lab? Yes, yes, there is always possibility, and you are most welcome. And maybe you are not aware, and the your all colleagues they have already uh, come to IIP, and they, in past also many bits plan students they used to come to IIP for summer training and internship. The most welcome, then uh, you have to apply uh, through proper channel. Then you write an email to me, the email given to you. It is very much possible. You are most welcome. Okay, sir. And the, the other thing, the other question is, sir, uh, you talk about some incubation center uh, in Manipur. Like, or is it already uh, set up there in our state or is it something which is you're planning in the future? Uh, I would say very briefly, not in detail, uh, it is not planning. There is all land, building, everything is already there. <laughs> Only thing is that uh, we are uh, in making. I will say in, in short, we are in making. Uh, we, are, we are in process of implementation. Okay, sir. So those uh, mini projects you talk about, they are already, uh, they have already started, right? Is yes. Like that or? Already started. So if, uh, let's say if I want to be a part of those projects, uh, is there a chance? Yes, why not? Being from the same field and uh, as a student from the electrical electronics, then uh, you are going to be the core team for the uh, electric mobility in India. The people. Sorry, no. How do yes. I proceed to uh, to be? You can email. Uh, let you uh, please give chances to others also. Okay. Sir. Okay. Thank you very much for thank your. You, sir. Yeah, basically, Michael, uh, you can just uh, send out an email to Dr. Robindro and he will guide you properly. So you can just start the first thing. So additionally, I would request any other speaker. Uh, yeah, I see uh, I see three more hands rise. Uh, one is the uh, one is the Hidam Boris and one is yeah, let's go by uh, this. Alpha, yeah, Nils, over to you. Yeah, yeah, I am not able to see their hand. So, uh, Hidam, you can just start. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, sir, I am a student from NIT Manipur. Uh, right now, I, my branch is electrical engineering, and right now I'm in the final year, sir. The first question that I would like to ask from you is that uh, how long will it take the electric vehicle cost will be reduced. Like uh, nowadays the electric vehicles prices are very high. It's more than one lakh. So how long it will take 
to reduce uh, comparatively like compared to the IC engine, sir. <laughs> it's a very nice question from the public perspective. And uh, I will uh, answer in a different way. Uh, basically, your price of a product it depends on your volume of sales. When the volume of sales increase, your price will drop down and the associated technology like, as I said, uh, if the same vehicle had been uh, uh, in 10 years back, it should have been three times expensive than the price of now. So because of the reduction in the uh, cost of lithium-ion battery, that's why the price is now. When the lithium-ion battery cost reduced further, your, uh, that will affect the cost of the electric vehicle. And the electric vehicle uh, will be at par with the IC engine vehicles in a very short time. And if you see from the operate, uh, operational cost, the operational cost electric vehicle will be around one rupee or less than one rupee per kilometer, while your petrol vehicle will be around five to six, to six rupees per kilometer. You can see the difference from the running cost. So that will make you your ROI, the return of invest for the electric vehicle that will overtake the your IC engine vehicle in maybe one or two years, depends on your uh, running condition and it depends on how frequently you run. Sir, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the second question is, uh, sir, uh, as no as India is trying to uh, build many electric vehicles, so there is a much need for setting up of uh, charging stations, sir. Multiple charging stations need to be set up in different parts of the country, sir. Indeed, uh, the uh, talking about the electric vehicle means the battery itself. So as we know, is that the, while charging the battery, we are using a power electronics device are using. So we will be facing like the harmonic problems will be there, like current harmonic, voltage harmonic. They can directly impact to the grid as well as they can damage the transformers and many electrical equipments might be damaged because of the harmonic. So is there any uh, solution to this that we can implement so that the, the damage could be reduced, sir. That is my last question, sir. Your, your question is uh, how we are going to reduce the repulse of current and all those, no? Uh, yes, sir. The harmonics, sir. Yeah, harmonics is uh, one of the uh, research topic that you have to study at uh, college and university level. How to reduce is the uh, job of the researchers. The more the, um, the more you reduce, the better, and then uh, more you nullify it is better. That is how this all over uh, the efficiency. That is how the, the system efficiency, your uh, subsystem efficiency is all about. Then uh, you have to see uh, that how you are designing your uh, DC to DC converter or whatever the power system, then your current and voltage, the ripples, how you are taking care and uh, what kind of filters you are putting in and then uh, filter characteristics, then component, so on and so forth. You have to do a lot of uh, research uh, with different combinations and the, uh, yeah, that's what I would say. And the best thing is the, the, the controller or component with more efficiency, the better, it will be more desirable. Okay, uh, is there okay. anyone who want to ask? Uh, uh, I think uh, yeah. Mr. Sudhakar. Sudhakar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm Sudhakar. I'm pursuing environmental engineering and tech in NIT Agartala. So, okay. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, first of all, I want to ask uh, actually topic. Uh, but uh, so I've talked talk about the um, investment that is done by the central government. There is more than thousands of thousands of crore. But when we see in our state that uh, there are many uh, uh, diesel autos and there are many vehicles that uh, that's uh, that is more than the uh, edge limit as well as they're pol polluting more and uh, when we see that uh, solid waste management truck like uh, which are which are coming to collect the solid waste uh, when we see the uh, see that they're uh, causing lots of pollutions their emission is very high so uh, what do you want to say in this uh, particular thing sir uh, regarding this, uh, there can be a phase, phase wise replacement of those polluting vehicle with electric vehicle. Like recently, in Manipur, our Chief Minister has started uh, your uh, waste collection, uh, the vehicle by the electric rickshaw with the carrier, the, the waste collection under your 
municipal west uh, vehicles are all electric vehicles now in in, uh, in manipur there are around i think 30 or 40 vehicles already uh, operational in manipur so like that there has to be that initiative has to be uh, taken up by the relevant uh, government department uh, joining hands together and getting guide from the laboratory like us or iits uh, if they don't know the technology then that is the uh, up to the department to implement and uh, to do something uh, new and to replace the uh, the vehicle with lot of pollution that is what i would say they i don't have much thing to do uh, uh, to say about those vehicles okay thank you sir and one more question is that uh, in electric cars and vehicles like the charging time is uh, more so is there any uh, possibility that in the near future that it can be reduced or like charging time that may be reduced or sort of yes there is possibility and uh, there are all- there are already a fast charging system available in market you might have heard the dc fast charging and then ac fast charging we have four charging systems basically one is the ac slow charging then ac fast charging dc slow charging dc fast charging so you have to select which one is more uh, suitable for your application so fast chargings are basically installed at the public place because people come and go and people don't have time to wait for hours and a slow uh, slow charging systems are deployed at uh, residential areas like at individual level uh, like for a tesla you have the tesla supercharger they can charge the entire tesla car in 45 minutes in 15 minutes when you have a cup of tea the time during that time then uh, 75 of the uh, battery can be charged then must uh, for charging you can do it and then you can uh, carry on with your journey already available and people are working and uh, it is only thing that they are yet to come on indian roads and uh, tata power is already working on that and the tata power has a very big mission to have around 1 lakh uh, charging station across the country by 2026 so uh, there are around thousands of electric charging stations available in some cities like delhi and other Okay, and one more uh, question is that, like, according to the Paris Agreement, that we have to achieve, like, uh, for India, we have to achieve the uh, complete uh, uh, the replacement of this uh, IC engine by electric by two thousand thirty to thirty five. You have mentioned that, so can we be able to achieve this? Ah, uh, uh, that is very difficult question. Uh, no, the report says the the study says that, but. our uh, climate the paris uh, you we can uh, call it cop uh, cop 21 the paris agreement paris uh, yeah. paris agreement never uh, uh, never recommend to replace entirely because it has to be balance some trade off between the existing automotive companies and the upcoming automotive companies so paris climate uh, play, paris uh, agreement says that our global target of 1.5 degree celsius i think uh, have you heard that i think uh, to achieve that every signatory and the every uh, country has to participate and uh, uh, fulfill their minimum uh, objectives that is where uh, 1 billion tree plantation so and so for are coming up so these are very tricky question that you are asking <laughs> and uh, i don't have the right answer right now because this technology is ongoing and uh, it, it has miles to go okay sir thank you sir <laughs> Okay, yeah, right. Uh, basically, it is an agreement. So it is an agreement between countries. So every country has their responsibility also. So uh, it is a very tricky question. Yes. Coming next, uh, we have two more person who are willing to ask some queries. Uh, first one is Toizam Nongkong Koiba. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I have a question about. Sir, uh, dear, uh, dear, we can face some like uh, challenges while transitioning from EV vehicles. Uh, no, from the, the IC vehicles to the uh, EV vehicles. So, what are the challenges we uh, we may face during the near future? And then, like, how do we motivate the people that from for using the electric vehicles? Uh, very good question. And uh, some challenges I have already uh, mentioned in our my slide, like. global global warming and climate change impacts and then uh, other challenges from the logistic point of view like a number of charging stations like we have the petrol filling stations so we need to increase the number of charging stations built in to 
point point A, point B, or city A or city B. Uh, uh, they, these are the uh, basic uh, requirement. Once you have that charging infrastructure, the basic requirement, then ownership of electric vehicle will be increasing, will be increased, and the and uh, with the uh, different incentives like when you buy electric vehicle, uh, you don't need to pay the road tax. Then uh, the GST is only five percent. Those in incentives are already in place. So as compared with the IC engine, IC engine vehicle, uh, you have to pay around 18% GST and you have to pay road tax and the uh, insurance. Whereas for electric vehicle, these are the beneficial that you can get it. And uh, plus your uh, running cost will be uh, very low and uh, that will make you uh, uh, your ROI, uh, ROI return of investment in very short time uh, as compared with the IC engine vehicle. And basically, uh, the why we are going from IC engine to electric vehicle is to uh, fulfill two objectives. One is the fuel saving of the country, and the second one is the uh, to mitigate the uh, the vehicle tailpipe emissions coming out of the vehicle tailpipe. Those are those pollutants we need to reduce. Otherwise, all man-made uh, disasters will be keep on coming. So these are uh, very. Uh, disastrous at a very unprecedented level. So this is how I will answer it. In the, I don't have the right answer at why it is going because like mobile, you see in mobile first generation it was only texting and the uh, phone call. Now you see the fifth generation like 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. The version keeps on changing from time to time. The technology keeps on changing, keeps on growing, and the a new technology comes up, so all technology has to be phased out. This is how I will uh, answer to you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, next, Sundar Toizam. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sundar Toizam, uh, working as a postdoctoral researcher at Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology, South Korea. And uh, thank you, sir, for the uh, wonderful lecture. And uh, my question is, uh, most, uh, as, as, as you mentioned in your slides, that uh, most of the components of uh, EV vehicles in India are imported from other countries. So please comment on this. And, uh, uh, and the second question is, uh, is there any plan uh, for the government of India to make it entirely indigenous? Yes. Uh, uh, that was it. First question, so you are saying that I said that uh, most of the EV components were imported. Yes, right? Yes, and, sir. Uh, as you see the e-rickshaws, those are available in every corner of India. E-rickshaws, basically the body belongs to the local company and that your drive train belongs to the uh, foreign companies like uh, South Asian companies. And under the FEM1, the, the basic uh, objective was to have the fuel saving as well as introduction of the electric vehicle in Indian market. But other the companies started doing the same thing to fulfill the fuel saving, but started importing this uh, ma uh, the main dry trend system from, from the other countries. That is how uh, that is how we learn from the FAM1. Then we now go to the FAM2. Then uh, under the government's uh, objective and direction that saying Atman Nirvar, then everything is possible uh, for manufacturing in India, all the major components, then uh, government is uh, having a scheme to attract the startup companies so that we have the self-reliance and the import substitution target under the Atma Nirvar vision. That's why uh, there are so many startup companies coming up right now, uh, starting manufacturing electric motors, electric motor controller, then DC-DC converter, and all other uh, subsystems. Uh, at the moment, uh, there are not a full flesh company engaging the manufacturing of these subsystems in India. And uh, there are so many startup companies having prototypes. When we started uh, this EV research around five, six years ago, we were struggling to get these subsystems uh, like anything because no Indian company were manufacturing uh, to fulfill our objective of the project. Our uh, objective of the project was to use the local components. So we were struggling like anything. Now there are uh, many few companies that we know and we are in touch. So they are into the 
uh, prototyping as well as in the under development stage. And uh, for the controller also then in the same stage. And for the second question, yes, definitely. The government has a different stage of uh, planning as well as different schemes. Like, as I said, under FAM2, already 10,000 crores are already there. And the majority of this 10,000 crore will be uh, covering your basic infrastructure development. Uh, that is basically the charging stations. And then unless we have the infrastructure, then uh, the ownership of vehicle is not going to get increased. Uh, that is why the government is pushing. And that's why the schemes, as I explained in the previous uh, the question, and that uh, re, uh, exemption of uh, vehicle registration and uh, your GST, 5% uh, GST for electric vehicle registration, so and so forth. These are from the government side. So there are, uh, these are the government side. And uh, for example, under the FAM2 is already ongoing uh, scheme. Uh, in FAM2, there are, there are clauses. If your electric vehicle use 25% Indian make components, then you are eligible for 20% of subsidies, so and so forth, something like that. If you are using 50% uh, of your EV, uh, then, uh, then you are eligible for more uh, percentage of subsidies. These are already defined and these are uh, in place to attract and increase the, uh, the local companies and the local startups. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, my last question is, uh, we have all known uh, about the uh, Tesla company, which is one of the leading uh, electric cars uh, manufacturing companies. So right. uh, what is your observation uh, of the current facilities or the uh, program or infrastructure which we have in India as compared to the Tesla or the other uh, countries like the European countries? Uh, yeah, compared to the Western world, uh, I think India is in a very initial stage. We, India is in a baby steps. So anyway, uh, it will grow. And the uh, only thing is that at what speed it grows, that is the, uh, the everyone is focusing. It is going to grow. Definitely everybody knows that. That's why the lot of hundreds of startup companies already in India, which, which were not there uh, five or six years ago, uh, right now, even the Tesla has already uh, ventured into India and uh, they have opened up an uh, office in Bangalore and started doing the uh, market survey as well as uh, a product survey and uh, so on and so forth so that they are suitable for Indian uh, road conditions. So Tesla is going to come up one, uh, uh, what you call uh, Indian, Indian condition suitable vehicle. So definitely, and uh, you can see uh, from the automotive uh, perspective also, Every automotive industry in India, you name Mahindra, Mahindra, Tata Motors, Hyundai, Maruti, they are all lined up with new electric vehicle models. And some of them have already launched commercially in market like Mahindra, Mahindra, you have electric vehicle e verito then you have uh, electric version of uh, XUV 300, then uh, for Tata Motors, Nexon EV, then uh, EV Tigor from the Hyundai motor, they have a Kona already in the higher range. Lower version, they are coming up. In Maruti Suzuki, Suzuki also, they are very soon going to launch the electric version of Wagonar. And so on and so forth. Everybody is lined up with their own, uh, own uh, EV. Only thing is that they are waiting for the right time to strike in the market. Because of the COVID, I think uh, the market was affected and the every uh, OEM suppliers uh, were affected. That's why uh, future is bright and there are very a lot of potential and a lot of uh, scope for uh, every uh, person who are working in this uh, area, including the students, researchers, and the startup companies. Thank you so much, sir. Mm. Welcome, okay, thank uh, you. So let's take the uh, one more question, which will be the last one uh, from Valentina. So she has said a message that uh, she, her audio is not working properly. So I will uh, compile the question like that. Okay, how can we convince to use the electric vehicle to the customer because of, because it is having a high cost, high maintenance and any many other factors. So giving awareness only will help or is there anything that uh, you can say to convince a customer to shift to electric vehicle? Uh, I would put in three points. One is from the customer, customer perspective, one is from the industry perspective and one is from the research perspective. 
from the customer perspective i will cover the customer customer perspective first they will be concerned about the charging station then maintenance the cost and the roi and so on and so forth maintenance is compared to uh, ic engine maintenance is free for uh, electric vehicle because the moving part in electric vehicle is around 10 or 20 times less than the moving parts in the ic engine in electric vehicle you have a moving part around uh, less than 50 uh, whereas your ic engine has a moving part more than 3000 moving parts so more the moving parts so more the maintenance you require that's why uh, in electric uh, for electric vehicle is like your ceiling fan we never uh, do servicing and we don't intervene the ceiling fan and then unless it is start stop uh, it starts uh, uh, stop working and then uh, change some regulator so and so forth likewise in electric vehicle the maintenance is not required for electric motors maintenance is required only for the bearings those who are near the wheel the gear those will be uh, taken care by the gear oil because like in ic engine we don't normally change the gear oil gear oil is normally uh, it changes for around i don't know how many kilometer run maybe 1 lakh kilometer but for ic engine you need to do servicing for every one year there is compulsory to change the engine oil and the other your wheel balancing and the other uh, engine related uh, problems comparatively the maintenance cost will be very very uh, minimum in electric vehicle only thing is that in electric electric vehicle the awareness plus uh, the technology advantage has to go hand in hand and the technology advantage uh, uh, from the uh, cleaner environment as well as the uh, the fun to ride uh, and the the other and then unless you experience uh, yourself for example if somebody says your mobile uh, 5g mobile say uh, samsung mobile is has this must be so so and so forth he may be explaining a lot of features because he has already expl- uh, experienced it so y- you never know those uh, features and then unless you experience the <coughs> advantages that person uh, the third person explained that is what the, in the simple term what you can say is whenever there is a showroom open up before purchasing you can have a test ride yourself wherever and whenever possible that will give you the uh, difference of uh, uh, the enjoyment and a comfort level when you ride an electric vehicle because it is noiseless and you don't need to sense the gear and you don't need to uh, uh, use the clutch frequently and there is stress uh, stress free operational and uh, and the, from the performance point of view i think many of the youngsters might be noticing that tesla car competes with the uh, world's fastest car like ferrari and the porsche 911 this porsche 911 and a ferrari can uh, beat the tesla car for first 150 km per hour speed this tesla car always beat the fastest car in the world for la- uh, first 150 km per hour because electric motor is too fast it can accelerate too fast so it you can't simply compete with electric uh, vehicle so that is how i put it only thing is that uh, it is a transition from one technology or another techno- technology it will take time when people are accustomed and they know the advantage like once we had a landline telephone we switch over to mobile now you see no one is having the landline mobile uh, uh, phone it depends on so many features convenience and a technology uh, driven uh, distinct uh, uh, life and so many things are connected so i think uh, we have to experience it then only we can evaluate evaluate ourselves then uh, looking at the uh, reports and the uh, government schemes so and so forth uh, that is how i will put it yeah thank you and basically adding to your point of uh, technology transfer from one technology to another technology i think our country has already accepted it with one of its policies like a 15 year old fuel vehicle cannot be utilized so it is a simple indication that we are shifting to the electric vehicle or any new technology and uh, i would like to wind up with one queries where uh, no one is asking basically patanjali uh, excuse me dr nilas 
Mm. Uh, just one clarification from please, Dr. Please. Robindro. Uh, Dr. Robindro, thank you very much for your excellent and the motivating presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So, just I want to know about the type and certification regarding the IC and EV vehicles. Okay, all right. That's a very good question. Until unless you have the type approval certificate, then you can't have this any new vehicle uh, operation on road. For the IC engine, uh, there we have a different rule book. And for the EV, we have a different rule book. So one is to go through the procedure and follow the procedure and fulfill the procedure while you are developing uh, your vehicle. And uh, once it is developed, uh, then your prototype is ready. You have, your prototype has to be evaluated as per the standards. For the IC engine, there are a huge book. Uh, all the rules are already written down. For the EV also, we have a, a different rule book. Like uh, we have a Bureau of Indian Standard. Uh, takes care of other uh, the component based uh, rule book and the uh, automotive Indian standard that AIS committee is there. This is the top level uh, committee uh, for the government. They will decide from time to time and uh, they will amend the existing uh, rules from time to time based on the requirement of the industry and based on the requirement of the public. Uh, that is how I will put it. There are rule books that we need to look and look at. Okay, thank you for your clarification. Okay, uh, my queries was also in the same line, so I will skip my uh, queries. So coming to the uh, program proceedings, I would like to request Dr. Uh, Longjump Jaitiev to kindly give a word of thanks. Okay, thank you, Dr. Niras. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of the Kangminashi 8 lecture series of KKT Infal and the Misna team for giving me a golden opportunity for a concluding remark of word of thanks for the today's program. Next, I would like to thank my heartful, heartfelt gratitude to the Dr. Robin Rowe, Darren Lack from Principal Scientist, Head EV Technology Research Group, CSLR, Indian Institute of Petroleum, Dehradun, for delivering his nice and uh, excellent presentation and interaction section of this community ed lecture series. I also thank to the Dr. Padma Bhatti, Director, Tekedi Impal, Sinkai Wangjam, COO, Mitsuna, and Dr. Niras, uh, moderator of this program, for making a successful one. Lastly, I would like to give my sincere thanks to all the invitees, researchers, academicians, and participants for sparing their valuable time in participating and interacting this science communication lecture series of Kaminashi IT and making a grand success. Yes. I hope that the end of it was so I wholeheartedly appreciate and analyze to all the sincere efforts of the entire team of community IT, of KKT Impal and Misna team. Thank you all. I hand over to Dr. Niras. Thank you, Dr. Zaydev. Uh, with this, we come to the end of today's program, community edition number eight. And uh, I would like to say to all the participants that uh, the organizing committee has sent an email to all of you, to all the registered participants, to give a feedback. And uh, we will be issuing a uh, e-certificate for all the participants to those who have submitted the feedback form. And so we come to the end. So let me thanks again to all the participants and Dr. Robin Rowe. And any participant who want to contact or know more information, kindly contact Dr. Robin Rowe to the email he has provided. Or if you have missed out, you can go to the YouTube link of Ms. Na, where we have shown live uh, streaming. So you can watch anytime and you can grab the information, whatever you have missed in the YouTube channel of Ms. Na. So with this, we have come to the end of Community 8 edition. So thank